Okay, friends, it's in the oven. I just love it in there for the last few minutes. And this is how you make a polenta cake, and it's delicious. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you exactly how to make it. This is really delicious. Well, hello there, friends. Another essential. I call it essential because this is going to go on our uh, playlist and the essential. You know, that's where we put the pesto, that's where we put some basic things like the garlic puree and all the stuff that you need that are essential. And this, my friends, is an essential thing to learn how to make. It's a goat cheese polenta. You can serve it with uh, so many things. Um, I mean, you don't have to put goat cheese. Sometimes I put it with brie cheese, I put it with cheddar cheese, parmigiano reggiano. You pick the cheese, you put it in there. It's very simple to make, and it's not complicated. I don't do anything complicated. If it's complicated, I don't do it. You guys want to do things that are simple and are delicious. I love to serve it with a garlic shrimp. I love to serve it with uh, 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 short ribs. I love to serve it with uh, 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 any, any chicken, any fish, as a side dish. I grew up on a goat cheese polenta, on a polenta. My mom is Italian, and, uh, and instead of mashed potato, we would have polenta with so many different things. You put spinach in it, you can put mushroom in it, you can put sun-dried tomato, you can put all kinds of things in it. Let me get going and do it. We got a beautiful chicken stock. We got some buttermilk. We have some cornmeal. This is the uh, uh, pot cooked cornmeal. It goes faster, it's very fine cornmeal. Uh, it's uh, from Goya food, it's delicious. Uh, you can use whatever you want. I have corn, you can use frozen corn, that's not a problem. I have cheddar cheese, you can use cheddar cheese. Parmigiano Reggiano, goat cheese, eggs, three eggs, and a little bit of garlic. And a little bit of hot sauce. You do whatever you want with it, the ingredient. Those are the basic ingredients that I like to use. You know, I don't use water in nothing. And water tastes like nothing. So we don't use water. So I got two cups of chicken stock, and I got a cup of buttermilk. Now, you know buttermilk, this is whole buttermilk. Buttermilk is really amazing. It's very low in fat. You know, a lot of people say, oh, my goodness, buttermilk, buttermilk. Buttermilk is low in fat. Matter of fact, it has about four or five grams of fat per cup. Yeah, you see what happened here, friends? When you put the buttermilk in it, it kind of curdles in here, you see? Don't worry, don't let it bother you. It will all come together with just a little whisking, okay? Don't worry about a thing. That's what happened. Buttermilk is very low in fat, so it doesn't hold together. It's not like heavy whipping cream or even half and half, okay? Now we're gonna put the, uh, the cornmeal. We're gonna put it in slowly, because if I put it too fast, you know what happened? It kind of like gives you some lumpy stuff, so. Lumpy stuff, that's a new culinary term. Leave it up to me, I come up with them. I'm good with that. I make my own English. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, for those of you that think my accent is a fake accent, it's not. Okay, I'm half French and half Italian. All right, but I'm now I'm 100% American. God bless America. God bless the rest of the world. We need some blessing. <laughs> so, friends, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put some eggs, whole eggs. We're going to put... Uh, corn, 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 corn. You can use frozen corn if you want. You can use grilled corn, it's even better. And then we're gonna put some uh, garlic cloves, three of them, or you can use the garlic puree I showed you how to make. That's another essential, garlic puree. It's another essential. All right, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna process it. Thank goodness, I got this new Cuisinart. It's uh, silent, I mean, it doesn't make very much noise. The old one I had was like so noisy. I got all my cheese in there that I'm gonna put in a minute. In there I'm gonna put them. Let me get this hot. Let me get this hot over there. It looks like it went on a break. Oh, here it is. Oh, here you go. Oh, mama mia. There you go. You see, I gotta be careful not to put it too hot. But this is an induction cooktop. <laughs> that thing, man, you turn it on, it goes. You turn it off, it up, stops immediately as well. So I got it on, uh, Five, six, very fancy. To turn on and off, I just gotta touch the button and go on and off. Uh, it's very cool. So we're cooking this, and we're gonna turn this off. That was a little noisy. Uh, we're gonna turn it off. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take it out of here. I'll take the machine out of here so it's not in my way. All right, so I can finish the rest. And here we have it, we're ready to go. You see, I'm cooking it, I'm cooking it, I'm cooking it. I gotta put salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. What? Wow, did you see that? It's splattering. 
Let me make it a little less uh, fast. Salt and pepper. Okay. Now, there's the no hot sauce in there. I like to put a little shiracha in there, but it certainly is not necessary, friends. Okay. I got beautiful English cheddar. You don't like cheddar? Don't put cheddar. You could put Gruyere cheese. You could put Swiss cheese in there. You could put other cheese you want. Gouda. Gouda. Gouda would be delicious. Smoked Gouda in there. So this one is the basic recipe. A little goat cheese. You don't like goat cheese? Don't put it in. You know, that's what the whole thing about cooking. You don't like a certain ingredient? Don't put it in. Now, if it has egg in it, <laughs> and you don't put the egg on it, you're going to have an issue. <laughs> You can't say all of a sudden, you know what, I don't like egg, I'm not going to put egg. Well, then they make another recipe, yeah? Okay, you got, you got a certain ingredient. But if you don't like a certain cheese, put another cheese in there if you don't like it. You really don't have to have this, this cheese at all. You can definitely, definitely squeeze the cheese. You see, look, by the way, it's melting, 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 melting. Everything is going good. So now, let me tell you about polenta. Oh, by the way, this is the new machine. And when you go like this, the blade doesn't fall. Look, you remember the old one? He used to put that in there and the blade would fall and then we try to catch it. No good. You don't want to be catching it. No, sir. See right there? It's holding. That blade is holding. Look, look at this. It's pretty cool, huh? See right there? There we go. Right there. All right, so I'm done with this. I'm going to let it cook. So now let me tell you a little bit about this polenta. First of all, we like the egg is going to start cooking and the egg is going to start thickening it. Let me tell you something. You eat this. Let me put a hot sauce because I can't concentrate it unless all my ingredients are in it. You don't have to put the hot sauce. Don't put it in if you don't like. You know, to me, a hot sauce is, is, is good. It's in the background. Flavors have to be delicate. They have to be in the background. If it's too much, and, and what do we mean by background? Well, it's in the back. It's not in the front. If it's in the front, the minute you eat it, ha, it's got hot sauce in there. It got too much hot sauce. You could put a little nutmeg in there. You can have fun with it. You know what you could do also? My mom used to do that all the time. Take some uh, uh, spinach and mushroom, saute them with those sun-dried tomatoes, and put them in there. You can do so many things with this, okay? And one of my favorite ways to eat polenta, believe it or not, is, uh, is uh, I put it in, a, in a, like a soup plate. I put it in the bottom of the plate, and I put garlic shrimp on top. A recipe you should, find, you should look at, it's an old one. We're going to probably reshoot it, but right now I still think it's on our website. It's gambas al ajillo. Gambas al ajillo, sh sh garlic shrimp. I make a garlic shrimp, and, and you put that garlic shrimp on top of that polenta in a plate. Oh, mamma mia. Let me tell you, it's going to be amazing, all right? So look, it's cooking. It's cooking, or is it to sleep? So we can serve this polenta soft, like it is now, but we're going to let it cook just a little bit more. I like it to thicken to the consistency of mashed potatoes. We can serve it soft in a bowl, or we can serve as a cake, polenta cake. You've had it. You go to an Italian restaurant. And they serve you those uh, polenta cake. You know, they're round or they're square or, or triangle or whatever they make them. How do they get them? Well, first they got to get this. They got to get them to that shape right here because that's the part that is important. So you cook it. First, you got to test it, friends. You got to test it because you never know. You never know if you, if you forgot the salt and pepper. <laughs> that wouldn't be the first time I do it. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, baby. This is delicious. I'm just going to bring it to boiler. And then, you got to watch because it's splatter everywhere, this thing. And then, I'm going to show you how do we turn this into a cake, okay? How do we turn this to a cake? I'll show you. I'll show you. So instead of cooking it in a pot, when you want to make it a cake, you don't cook it in a pot. You cook it in the oven. Yep. So here we go. Look, I'll show you. What I did is I took a little uh, brush and I melted a little butter. Butter. Butter, you gotta have butter. Don't be afraid to put butter, folks. <laughs> butter is better for everything. Butter makes everything better. Better. Butter makes everything butter. No, <laughs> butter makes everything. I, did I say butter? I said butter. I said butter makes everything butter. Butter makes everything better. It really does. I love butter. But we can talk about that some other time. So we want a whole butter right here. We don't want to clarify butter or anything. Just regular butter, right? I want to put that in there. And now. Now, we're going to take our polenta, and we're going to put it right on here, friends. We're going to put it right on here. And, and, I, and, and on our website, you'll have the recipe, the complete recipe, printed out. Remember, for those of you that are not familiar with that, because I get a lot of comments, hey, where's the recipe? Where's the recipe? We can't find the recipe. If you 
right below the recipe, friends, right below the recipe, there's a thing that says show more, a thing. <laughs> so it says show more. You click on that and open up. In the bottom of the video, it tells you right there the recipe. You go in, you go to the website, you download the recipe, and you can make it. Now, let me tell you something. Let me just make it nice, eh? I'll make it nice. You know, I used to do drywall work. <laughs> so look, we're going to take it right here. That's it. We're not doing anything. We're not being difficult, right? We're just, we're not doing anything, and then all of a sudden, I'm fixing it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to leave it alone, right? Now I'm going to take it, friends. I'm going to pop it in the oven. Here's how you do it. Let me tell you. You pop it in the oven, about 375, and you're going to cook this thing, but no more than 10 to 15 minutes until it's slightly solid. If you cook it long enough here, then you really don't have to cook it that long in the oven, because if you cook it too long in the oven, it's going to dry it out. And then we're going to let it cool to get the room temperature. And then tomorrow, or, or, or in tonight, I'll put it in the fridge overnight. It solidifies. Wrap it when it's cool. Wrap it really good. Tomorrow, you take it, you cut it in slices, in cubes, in circles, whatever you want. And to reheat them, you can put them in a fry pan, those circles, those square, whatever it is. Get them hot, or you can pop them in the oven and reheat them. And you can serve it with so many things. Next to a steak, next to a lamb chop, next to a chicken. Trust me, it's delicious. But first try it soft. You may like it soft. You may decide you don't want to make a square out of it. You just want it soft. Either way, I promise you, you're going to like it. I hope you like this recipe. If you like it, remember, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to ring the bell so you get a notification every Thursday when I make the, a new video. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Please, we need subscribers. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next week with another video.